Good morning, LMC. It's a pleasure to have you here this morning again, like I said earlier. Um, and it's a, it's a privilege to be standing before you this morning and, and uh, to be able to come and bring you a message um, that I think, <clears throat> a message that I, I have been preparing for the youth, but I think all of us, even as adults, the not so young group um, uh, can benefit from. We, we have to be reminded that uh, we were created for a purpose. Uh, there is purpose in our life. And, and um, sometimes, sometimes us as an adults, we like to pretend that we know our purpose when we've actually still trying to figure it out or we may have lost our way. And, and yet God is so good that he, he's, he created us all with a purpose. So if you please um, stand as we get ready this morning, I want to read... Turn to your Bibles, Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. It says, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Father God, we just thank you this morning for the, for the privilege that we have to be here to, today. Whether we're here present or we're joining online, Lord God, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to hear your word, to worship you this morning, Lord God. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will help me this morning to convey the message that you have for us, Lord God. I pray that your Holy Spirit will open up our ears and our hearts, Lord God, to receive what you have for us today, Lord God. But most of all, Lord God, in all things, Lord God, that we would glorify you in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. So as I said, uh, as I, I said, uh, and the kids are probably going to hear me repeat a few things because uh, we spoke about this Wednesday night and we we touched a little bit yesterday. We had our, our youth Christmas party, and I want to thank the Mendoza family for opening up their, their home to us and allowing a bunch of teenagers and not so young teenagers pretty much ransack their, whole, their household. And uh, I, I pray for their neighbors because we were pretty loud last night <laughs> yelling and everything. But I'm so, so thankful that Belinda and I get to do that. It's a privilege to be youth pastors, and even more so here at LMC. We've got the greatest bunch of kids. Um, I tell the, I'll tell you parents and those of you that don't know, uh, every year, almost every year, we have trips, you know, whether it's a youth convention or youth camp. And, of course, we've got to lay out the, the laws and the rules and stuff as we go and everything. And, and the... But we always say, if we have problems, we're going to call your parents. And to this day, we've never had to call a parent. We, we've got a great, great group of, uh, of kids that are going out, coming in, and, and that stay with us for, for the many years that we, we get to have access to them. And, 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 you know, one of the things Belinda and I want them to, to know is, you know, they're not just teenagers. They're not just middle schoolers. They're not just high schoolers. They're not just your kids. They're not just church kids. They're God's children. And they were created for a purpose. And so my message may be geared to them in a sense because that's where I'm going with it. But as I said earlier, as adults, I think we need that reminder. And sometimes maybe as adults, we haven't quite found our purpose in life. And so we need to, under, we need to come to the knowledge that we have a purpose. We were created with a purpose, for a purpose. And one of the things that I've been saying on Wednesday nights is that, uh, or this past Wednesday and last night that I was telling the kids is, you know, we're celebrating the Christmas season right now. And that celebration as believers is we're celebrating the fact that Jesus came into this world. Uh, to, basically, his purpose was for you and me. Right. He, he left all that he had, the, being in the presence, the physical presence of the Father, so that you and I could have access to the Father. 
I don't know about you guys, but I think I'd be hard pressed to, to leave God's, the heavenlies in order to come back for even our loved ones. But Jesus said, you were worth it. He said, you were worth it. And I'm so, so thankful that he saw that we were worth it. God, Jesus, in the middle of knowing, coming into this world, coming into this world, he knew the things and the difficulties he was going to be facing as, as a human the Bible says he was fully man and fully God. So just because he's fully God doesn't mean he didn't feel the things that you and I feel. The pressures and the, and the, and the, the hurts and, the, and just it, you, whatever you've been through, he knows it. Right. He's acquainted with it. He understands it. See, the devil's a liar. He likes to tell us that nobody knows how you feel. Nobody's been in your shoes you don't understand how what I'm going through. You don't understand what I'm going what, what I'm experiencing. Yet, yes, there is one, at least one, and that's Jesus. Amen. He came with the purpose so that you, his purpose was to come and destroy the works of the devil. So whatever circumstances you find yourself in, whatever difficulties you find yourself in, remember Jesus' purpose for coming into this world was to give you victory over that. Amen. So we have to ask ourselves, what is my purpose in life? And I'm willing to say, even us as adults, sometimes we wonder, what is my purpose? And maybe we've even asked ourselves more than once throughout our lifetime, you know, I'm not that old, but I'm getting old. And I've probably asked myself a couple of times, like, okay, God, what's my purpose here? What am I doing here? What's, what's the purpose of me experiencing this? Because we have an ultimate purpose, uh, 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 and that's to glorify God. And that's really what I'm going to be talking about. But in each situation, in each season in our life, there is another purpose also as well, you know, of what we're going through. Um, those of you that have heard my testimony from years past of, of when my father passed away, it was a difficult time for me. It was a, it was a very, very difficult time. I was young in my, in my walk with Christ. I was, I was serving the Lord, and I lost my father. We prayed, we prayed, we prayed. Long story short, uh, I believed that he was going to be healed. I believed that he was going to come through a surgery, and he didn't make it through the surgery. I was a very difficult woman in my life, in my young Christian walk, but I made a choice. I made a choice to believe what God had said, Amen. that he was still with me, Amen. that he was going to see me through it. And I remembered uh, a preaching that I, that, I, uh, that I heard before when Jesus spoke to Peter and told him, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat. And he tells him, but I've prayed for you. And I took that to heart. Jesus is praying for me. And Jesus is praying for you. The Bible tells us he's seated at the right hand of God. He's the advocate that you and I so desperately need. All that to say is you were created for a purpose. What is that purpose? Why was I created? What is it? How can I find my purpose? And that's kind of what I've been telling the kids. How, you may not know because you're young. The, those of us that are young still, you know, we may still trying to figure out what's our place in life. Where are we going? How, what's the purpose? Why was I even born? Why, why was it? Why was I created? You know what? And some of us may even say, nothing seems to be going right. I shouldn't even be here. That's a lie of the enemy. We have to remember that God's word tells us we were created for a purpose. We are his children. If we, we have the privilege to be called by his name, we have the privilege to be called his children. We, we may get discouraged in life. We may have um, difficulties in life. But God is all, every single one of us, and maybe you don't know it, but he's given us talents. He's given us uh, a work ethic. He's given us abilities. He's given us so, so many blessings that we take for granted to use them for his purpose, for his glory. And so in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it's, we, were, we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to, good, to do good works for, uh, which prepare, 
which God prepared in advance for us to do. That means, guess what? If I don't know what my purpose is, God already does. So how do I find my purpose? And like I've been telling the students is, my purpose will be better known is when I find who Jesus is in my life. When I realize who Christ is in my life. See, I can accomplish all sorts of things without Christ. But in the end, none of that matters if I don't have Christ. But when I set my eyes and I set my, set my mind, like pastor's been preaching, when I've set my mind to find Jesus, to make him my Lord and Savior, not just say with my mouth, but actually live it out where he's my number one priority. He is my, my compass. He is the one that directs my life. He's the one that I take directions from. He's the one that gives me purpose in my life. So I may find myself growing up and studying to be a doctor. I may be finding myself growing up and studying to be a teacher. I may find myself growing up to study whatever it is that you're going to study. And those of us that are a little bit older, maybe we find ourselves in our workplaces, in our jobs, and we're working and we're working, but yet we can't figure out, okay, what's my purpose here? God is working it out. He's working it out. The question is, are you looking for him? Are you seeking his face? Because as we get to know the Father, Father God, as we get to know Jesus, Jesus gives us meaning to our life. You hear in this world and society, you hear so many, so many people say, well, I just feel like everything's meaningless. My life is meaningless. Yet they've accomplished so much by the world standards, yet they still feel unaccomplished. Like they haven't had, they, they, they cannot seem to figure out what their goal is. They, it just seems like they keep accomplishing, you know, secular things and things of this world, which are all great things. You know, we move up the ladder at work. We, we accomplish our, our degrees. We get our bachelor's and our match, um, uh, master's and we just keep going and moving up the ladder. But yet we still can't seem to find that satisfaction. It's because Christ isn't part of the picture. And maybe he is a part of the picture, but not the full picture. And I always tell, I always tell the students, it's, here's the thing is, as believers, everything we say and do should be through the lens of Jesus. Amen. Everything. Our work, we should be seeing our work through the lens of Jesus Christ. Our parenting, we should see it through the works of uh, through the lens of, G of Jesus Christ. Uh, our, our, our relationships with, with whoever it is, co-workers or friends or whoever you run out into the ministry, everything should be focused through the lens of Jesus Christ. If we're not doing that, then we're not going to find the satisfaction that we're looking for. Why? Because we're not looking for, the, the only one that can truly give us satisfaction is Jesus Christ. In the verse of Ephesians 2, there's two points. God created you. He created me. We weren't accidents. Despite what the world may tell you, you weren't an accident. Despite what maybe even some parents may tell you, you weren't an accident. You didn't take God by surprise. The Bible says that you were created in your, in your, he created you in your mother's womb. Before you were even born, your days have been already written out. You are not an accident. You and I are not an accident. The enemy comes into your life and he whispers these things and says, you shouldn't be here. You, you're, you were an accident. There was nothing that really, that nobody planned for you to be here. Lies. God knew you were, you were created by him and you were no accident. Not only that, but he, you weren't an accident and he has a plan for your life. He has a plan for your life and he has a purpose for your life. And see, we either believe what he says or we don't believe what he says. The enemy from... Let's be honest. 
Until we die, we're going to hear the whispers of, of Satan. We're going to hear the whispers of the enemy in our ears every day. Some days louder than others. Some seasons more difficult, more, it just seems like he's really rearing in and screaming in our ear, telling us we're, we're not worthy, we're not worth it, we're not, but we have to believe what Jesus says about us, what the word of God says about us. We were created, we were not an accident, we ha God has a plan for our lives, and he has a purpose. He's, <clears throat> excuse me. The purpose in life is to enter, our purpose in life is to enter into a closer relationship with Jesus. The Bible says that if I draw closer to him, he draws closer to me. He's constantly looking for a relationship between you and I. You know, as, as children, we're constantly, most of, most of our kids are looking for, our kids are looking for our affection, as, uh, the, the affection of the parent. Sometimes that's, that's in a loving way, and sometimes it's uh, in an in a acting out rebellious type of way, but they're still looking for your attention. They're still looking for your affection. You know, you and I were God's children. W what we don't realize is, just like our children's, children sometimes don't realize is, we're looking for his affection. We're looking for him. We're looking for his. The question is, is that we don't, I mean, excuse me, the the question is, do we understand that that's what we're looking for? You and I were created to have relationship with him, but sometimes we get lost along the way and we try and look up for our purpose and our relationship in the jobs that we do, in the friends that we have, in the things that, in the things that we find ourselves taking up, our, our consuming our time. You know, you name it, whatever it is, we think that we're finding relationship in those things and we're finding purpose in those things. And don't get me wrong, building a strong relationship with your family is a great thing. Building a great relationship with coworkers is a great thing. Having a great career is a great thing. But none of those compare to having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because if I can't get my relationship with Jesus Christ correct, then all those other relationships will eventually crumble and fall. There is a purpose why God created us for relationship. It's because he knows what's best for us. He's our creator. He's the one that formed us. He created us. So what, who better knows what we were created to do? You know, it's like, it, it, it's like an artist, you know. You, they paint a picture, and I don't know if you've ever been in an art gallery or seen them, but you go and you watch, you look at the art that's on the walls, and, and I'm going to be honest with you, sometimes like, man, what is that supposed to mean? Like, what is, what is that, you know? Uh, uh, and then they have the little plaques, and it says the title and maybe a meaning or whatever, and um, sometimes I still like, I don't, I don't see it. I didn't create it, though. That wasn't my work. Therefore, I don't know what it represents. Therefore, I don't know what, what it's for, what it's trying to speak, what it's trying to say. But the creator does. The creator is able to express his thoughts, his mind through it. Guess what? We were created in God's image. And he knows how to express himself in us and through us. There's a purpose in our being here. John chapter 3, verse 3 says, I tell you the truth, no one comes to see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. And again, John chapter 6, 35 says, I am the bread of life. And one more time, John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. These verses speak of relationship. Of relationship. How do we get to know the Father? Through Jesus Christ. He, he, we were created for relationship for him. Our purpose in this life is to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's our number one goal. goal. From the moment that these kids that are in Sunday school as little ones, even in the nursery, all the way through youth and even as ad adults, our number one goal and our number one purpose in life is relationship with Jesus Christ. He has got to be our number one. 
above all things. He's got to be our number one. You and I were created for God's glory. Isaiah 43, verse 6 and 7 says, Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth, everyone who is called by my name, everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. What's he saying? Whom I formed, whom I created, were created for what? For his glory. You and I were created to, for his glory. You know, it's great. It's great when you and I receive accolades, you know, at work. You know, we receive, you know, we, we, we earn things here on earth. We earn things at home. You know, we, we accomplish great things and, and we get, you know, we get lifted up and everything. But more importantly, it's that we lift up Christ. That when we accomplish those things, when we graduate from high school, when we graduate from university, when we, when we um, get promoted at work, when we're, we're told job well done, when whatever it is that we do, I ask you this, do they, say G, do they see Jesus in you? Because here's the thing is, we were created to glorify him, to bring him glory. We can accomplish a lot of things without Jesus, but like I said earlier, none of that means anything if he's not our number one, if people can't see him in us. We were created to praise God. We were created to praise him, not just on Sunday mornings. You know, uh, uh, that's, that's a hard one to, to, to come across with people sometimes. You know, you can praise God anytime you want. Even in the difficulties, I, and I would even say when you're going through a difficult time, that is the time to worship him and praise him. Because if you're going through a difficult time, you're not dead. As somebody always has it worse than you. You know, I've been going through a little bit of something this, these last couple of weeks, and I, I'm going to tell you, it's been terrible. Um, I've had late nights. Uh, I've had rough evenings, mornings have been okay, but it's been pretty, pretty difficult what I've been going through. And um, I can't, I, I, I cannot sit there and pout. I can't sit there and, and moan and cry because why? Someone has it worse than me. I just, I, I just praise God that he's given me the ability to, in, to endure with him. He's given me this, the strength to endure. I thank God that he's given me um, a wife who's understanding, uh, a daughter who's very understanding and, and helpful. I, I thank God that he's even directed me to the right people so that I could get some help. But, you know, it's every single one of us goes through things. But we were created to praise him. Amen. And a lot of times when we're going through difficult times, that's hard to do. But you guess what? Do it. Just do it. Set your mind to praise him in the good and the bad because he is worthy. Amen. It's not about your circumstances. It's not about you. It's about who he is. And he is God and he is good to you. He's always shown you good. He's always been good to you. The Bible says he's the healer of my diseases. He's the lifter up of my soul. He's the provider that I have. He, he is my all in all. He is worthy to be praised. We were created to praise him. Well, that reminds me, and I, I didn't get a chance to write it down, and I know I'm terrible with words, but the song that we were singing just now, uh, in the chorus it says, let me see if I can find it right here. In the chorus, it says, you are my champion. Champions, uh, giants fall when you stand. Undefeated every battle you've won. You and I, we can't, in the, we, can't, we can't win our own battles. It's only in him. And if he's undefeated and every battle he's won, why wouldn't I want him finding on my side? 
Why wouldn't I want him on my side? Why wouldn't I want him my, be my number one? It says, I am who you say I am. He says, I'm his child. I was created for a purpose. That's who I, that's who I am. I'm, I'm a child of God with a purpose. It says, you've crowned me with confidence. That's the other thing. It's very difficult. Even when you know your purpose, confidence sometimes lacks. We're, not, we're unsure. We're doubtful. But Jesus, Jesus does give us confidence. If he's called us to do it, he's going to do it for us. Amen. He's going to equip us to do it. If we're called to praise him, guess what? He, we, he's worthy to be praised. He's going to give us the ability to praise. They're, 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 God is just, he's, he's so good to us. He, he's just so, so good to us. We were created to grow, to mature, and to display the fruits of the Spirit. Display who he is. What are the fruits of the Spirit? Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now I encourage you, not now, sometime this week, go back and reread that, those verses. And then let's be honest with yourself. What do I exceed in this? What do I, what, in, 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 these, in the fruit of the Spirit, in this list, what is it that I do well here? What is it that I don't do well here? What is it that I need to ask God to help me here? I can tell you there's two or three of them that I know, I, I can tell you right off the bat, God needs, needs to, I need to ask God for help. But I was created for his purpose. And so, if I'm created for his purpose, for a purpose in his life, here, here's where uh, I'm like a broken record. I can never know his purpose if I don't get into the word of God. I can never know what he wants of me, what he expects of me, what he desires of me if I'm not reading his word. How can I even know what the fruit of the spirit is if I don't read the word of God? It's it's. It's one of those things that if I can't read it and I don't allow it to soak in and study it, then I'm never going to know. And therefore, I'll never know my purpose. I'll never accomplish it. I'll never be able to, to, to move forward. Why? Because I'm not reading my word. And reading my word isn't so much just information, but it's also relationship. That's God speaking to you and me. That's me, me and him having a conversation. This is God's word speaking to my life. And, and I'm getting to know God because I'm getting to know who he is. The Bible tells me who God is, what he, what, why he created me, what he expects from me. It, it, it's a relationship there. The word of God is a relationship that you and I need to be having. We need to be reading. And so we were, we were created with the purpose to display the fruit of the Spirit, the love in our life, the joy in our life, the peace, the patience, the kindness, the goodness, the faithfulness, the gentleness, and the self-control. I don't know which one of these you struggle with, but I can tell you this much. If you seek God and you ask Him to help you, He'll help you find it. He'll help you succeed in it. He'll help you excel in it. Yeah. Amen. He's, he's created you for a purpose. And if he's created you for a purpose, he's not going to let you fall. He's not going to let you. He's going to finish the work that he began in you. Yeah. Psalms 96.3 says, Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds amongst the people. Isaiah 12, chapter, uh, chapter 12, verse 4 says, Make known among the nations what he has done and proclaim his name is exalt, that his name is exalted. And Matthew 28, <clears throat> verses 19 and 20 say, Therefore, 
Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. What do these verses have in common? They tell us that the purpose in my life is to tell others about the love that Jesus has for them. We have a purpose to tell others about what Jesus Christ has done in our life and what he's doing in our life. Whether we're in school, whether we're at work, whether we're stay-at-home uh, parents, wherever we find ourselves, there's a purpose in our life that we are to tell those that are around us about what Jesus Christ is doing in our lives and what he can do in their lives. God has been so good to you and I, there is no reason that we should not be sharing what he's done in our lives. Many of us can honestly say that God has literally taken us out from death's grips. And sometimes we're afraid to tell people that he's done that for us. You know, we, 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 we sing these songs that he's our champion and that he does this, but we don't go out and tell the world what he's done for us. We think it's just for here amongst each other. It's not. It's to go out into the world, into the nations. Well, I'm not a missionary. That's okay. Your mission field is your workplace. Your mission field is your school. And for each and every one of us, our mission field is our homes. Parents, please don't neglect being the missionaries to your children. They need you now more than they will ever need you. I, I, I just, I, I'm sorry, but the, it's difficult. It's very difficult to think that just because they live under our house, they're going to believe the way we believe. It doesn't work that way. They've got to see it in us. They got, to see, they got to see our faith worked out, not just in us, but through us. We've got to show them the love of God in our homes. We've got to show them what, what God's love is. We've got to show them what God's discipline is. Don't be afraid to discipline your child. Don't be afraid to set boundaries. Don't be afraid to tell them, yes, this is right. No, this is wrong. Don't be afraid to correct you're the mission, you, they're your mission field, parents. Spouses, your spouse is your mission field. You, you're, the, you're the one that's going to raise, you're, excuse me, not raise, you're the one that's showing them who, who Jesus is. You're the one that's supposed to be loving them like Jesus loves them. Forgiving them like Jesus forgives you. You know, it's, it's every one of us has a purpose to tell others around us that Jesus is there for them, what he's done for us and what he can do for them, that they have a savior, that they can call upon his name and they can, they can trust him and have put their faith in him just as you and I have. With that, those around us are our mission field. It doesn't mean that I, you have to be a pastor. It doesn't mean you have to be a youth pastor. No, that's... Where God has placed you, that's purposeful. He's put you in the family that he's put you in because that's where you belong. And that's where you are to be the love of Jesus to everybody around you. You're supposed to show who Jesus is. You're supposed to allow him to flow in you and through you to your family. Your workplace, that wasn't... Let me be honest here. Your workplace, you didn't get yourself there. You didn't go through years of college to get there. You didn't go through years of, of whatever it is to get there. No, God put you there. We, we, we like to say, I've done this, I've done that, I've, I've put in the time. And yeah, you have. Yes, we have. We all have put in time. But if it wasn't for the grace of God, I wouldn't be there. You wouldn't be there. He put you there for a purpose, to glorify him, to tell others about him.
I'm going back, he's given you gifts and talents, talents, each and every one of us. He's given each and every one of us an ability to do what we do. Something that we may excel better than others, something that catches our attention more than others, something that we do well, we enjoy doing. He's given us the talent to do, the ability to do, the strength to do. Not everybody can do what Sister Mary does. Not everybody can do what Jesus does. Not everybody can do what I do. But everybody can do what you do. What you yourself, excuse me. Everyone can do what themselves can do. That, that you, that's your job. That's who you, God created you. That your ability. God gave you those abilities to do what you're doing where you're at for his, his glory, his purpose. He's giving you those talents. He's giving you those gifts. Use them for the glory of God. Use them to lift up his name. Romans chapter 12 verses eight through, 4 through 8 says, Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not have all the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him, let him use it in the portion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him generously let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. What's he telling us? We all have a responsibility. And that responsibility is use our gifts and talents for his glory and his honor. He's given us a purpose for that. And let me just throw in something. That doesn't just go out outside of these walls, outside of this, outside of it, in the work field. That goes here in the church too. He's giving you gifts and talents not only so you can exceed and excel and make a living outside in this world, but also to use here in the church. You and I, every single one of us, has a responsibility to serve the church. In one way, one form, one, however, whatever God has given us the talent to do, that's how we should be serving the church. And we do it to the best of our ability. I was having a conversation with someone the other day. I said, many times as believers, we, we understand the word of God tells us do all things. Everything we do, we do it as unto the Lord. And so we use that to encourage ourselves at work to do our best at work. To do, give it our all, do our best at work. But we forget as believers to do the same thing here at church sometimes. It's not just about out there and displaying the, the love of Jesus, who Jesus is to the people that don't know Jesus. But the Bible says they'll love, that, that they'll know who you are by the love that you have for each and every one of you, uh, each other. If you're not serving in the church, if you're not doing the best that you can here in the church, I mean, I'm going to leave it at that. We're ready to, to, we're ready to do our best to earn that paycheck out there. Let's give our best to the one that gives us the ability to earn that paycheck. Amen. He is so good to us. Doesn't he deserve the best? Yes. Amen. Doesn't he deserve better? Amen. You know, it, he deserves your, those talents that you have. Use them to glorify him. Those gifts that you have, use it to glorify him. We were created for a purpose. And last and not least, <clears throat> in discovering our purpose for, for who, who God created us, um, I'm going to just remind, her, remind you. Don't let the enemy discourage you. Don't, make him, don't, let, don't allow the enemy to make you feel like you're not important or that your purpose in life isn't wor worth it or your purpose in life really doesn't matter. You know, it, it doesn't matter what type of job you do, your job matters. If that's what pays the bills, then that's what pays the bills. 
here in the church, it doesn't matter what type of work you do here in the church, whatever it is, that was your, that's your job. That's your, that's your gift. That's, you're doing it unto the Lord. You, it doesn't matter how little you think it is or how grand it is. Either way, you're doing it for the Lord. Don't be discouraged when the enemy tries and tells you what you do doesn't matter. How you're, uh, what, what, that you have no significant part in the church. You do. Every single one of us has a significant part in the church. Why? Because we were created for that purpose, to glorify him, to edify the church. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 says, On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker or indispensable and the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it. Basically, what he's saying is a lot of times we think the, the, the parts that don't matter, they don't really think like the picking up of trash or the, or the picking up, cleaning the restroom or, or the, you know, uh, doing the, the, the work that somebody else can do, you know. And I'm not just talking about at church. I'm talking about anywhere. We think those things don't matter, but they do matter. To God, everything matters. To him, everything's important. He wouldn't have created it if it wasn't important. He wouldn't, you, he wouldn't allow you to have that job if it wasn't important. He wouldn't allow you to have those talents and those gifts if it wasn't important, if it wasn't for his purpose. So your, your job or, or the things that you feel like you, you should be doing, the, your talents, no matter how small maybe the world looks at it or how small the, the enemy tries to make you think it is, it's not small. God is giving you a purpose in that job or God is giving you a purpose with that talent to use it to glorify him and to lift his name up. Don't downplay the value of what you do. Don't compare yourself to others or give up, or give up if someone does a better job than you. You know, that's, a, that's, the, that's one of the things is God has given us a purpose to serve roles in work, in church, wherever we find ourselves. And sometimes we get discouraged because someone comes along and does a better job at it. Praise God. Someone's doing a better job than me. Praise God. You know, I was so, so thankful when Arnold took over the live streaming because I've got no knowledge of what it takes back there to, to run that. Everything that I've learned, I've learned through YouTube and trial and error, or as Charlene likes to say, school of hard knocks. I've got a lot, I've probably got like a doctor's in school of hard knocks. But I'm super thankful that Arnold's taken over that because he has more knowledge in that, in that and he has a better ability to figure out things and, and to know that because he's knowledgeable in that area. And now I don't have to really worry about it anymore. You know, when someone comes along and is able to do something that you do, your purpose hasn't finished. Maybe for that season, God had you there for that purpose. Now he's moving you on to another purpose. And now it's his purpose there. God is creating for his purpose there. Now it's your turn to focus on something else. Okay, God, what do you want me to do now? Instead of, I, I, you know, some people tend to get bitter. Some people to get pout because now I can't do what God created me to do. God created you to do more than one thing. We can do more than one thing. I can tell you that much. We're, we're not that helpless that we can't just, that we can't do more than one thing. Um, and so, we, man, praise God when someone comes in, encourage others. If you see a talent and a gift in others, encourage them to use it for the Lord. You see something in someone, don't be afraid to speak into life and tell them, hey, you know what? You, you really have a knack for such and such and such and such. Let me encourage you, keep it up. Keep, keep working at it. Keep doing it. Or you know there's a need say, you know what? Maybe you might be interested in talking to so-and-so because we could use some help there. I mean, we do that at work all the time, don't we? 
We, we're, we're ready to, to when jobs are, when, when our job is hiring, we're ready to say, hey, I know somebody, I know somebody that can, and we go and call them up and say, hey, I got a job here that's, you know, I think you're going to like, you're ready. We're ready to encourage and bring people in and everything. It's the same thing. We, but we're, everything is through the lens of Jesus Christ. All that we do is through the lens of Jesus Christ. You and I have to focus through that lens for his honor and his glory. So when we, when we serve, not just here in the church, but at work, people need to see who Christ is. And when at work, when someone comes in and, be, comes in and does that, kind of moves us over, hey, praise God. Well, I'm not at church. Either way, praise God. Church isn't these four walls. Church is you. And people see you and they associate church with you. They associate Jesus with you. When they see you pouting or upset because someone else got replaced you because they could do a better job. And all you do is sit there and spin your wheels because you can't figure out what you need to do next. What does that say about the church? What does that say about Jesus? That he can't help you? That you don't have enough faith to trust that he's going to get you through it? That he's going to put you to do something else? It's, we've got to understand that we have a purpose. And everything that happens to us is for a purpose. And in all that, whether it's good or bad, like I said earlier, whether it's, it's a difficult circumstance or not, we can still glorify him and praise him. And when we do that, this, guess what? The, the world out there that doesn't know Jesus and they see you with a good attitude when difficult circumstances happen, when you don't get the grade that you wanted, when you don't get the, the, the even the class that you were looking for, you don't get the, the promotion that you wanted, whatever it is, when they see you still in good spirits, praising God, glorifying God and encouraging, even encouraging the person that maybe took the job that you wanted, they see a difference in you. And that's Jesus. Our purpose in life is to point others to Jesus. Amen. That's it. That's our greatest purpose in life is to point others to Jesus. That, that's it. The greatest purpose we have is to point others to Jesus. He's given us everything that we have. Our experiences, our school, our work, our family, our work environment, whatever. Everything that we have in this life, whether we've been in church from as a nursery kid or we just found Jesus and just started to come, guess what? Jesus can use all that experience before him. He can use it for the honor and glory of his name. Because there's somebody else in this world that's lived a life that you've lived or is living a life that you used to live and can look at you and say, if he made it, I can make it. If Jesus can change his life, he can change my life. And if you've grown up in church and you've known God all your life and you're the church kid who doesn't really know the world, he can still use that too. He can glorify him. You can glorify him because he's kept you from things that other people didn't have to experience, that did experience. And you've suffered and had uh, difficulties that others that don't have. We all have have something to give to the Lord, to testify to God that what he's done in our life, our purpose though, is to point Jesus, uh, excuse me, point others to Jesus. Amen. All that happens to us, all that we go through from the day that we're born until the day that we live, it's to point others to Jesus. We can always look and see, if we're looking through the lens of Christ, we can see that he's working it out. He's working it out. The Bible says he's working it out for the good of those that are loved by him, that are called by him according to his purpose. And see, we like to we like to mix up our purpose with God's purpose. You know, we like to say, this is what I was made to do. And yet we still haven't really given God the authority over our life. 
But until we give God the authority of our life, he becomes Lord of our life, then the purpose that we have in our life lines up with his purpose. You know, he's, there, there's a verse that says, he gives you the desires of your heart. And some people use that verse and say, well, he's going to give me whatever I want. And it doesn't really work that way. He gives you the desires of the heart when your heart is lined up with his. And when your heart is lined up with his, it's no longer your desires. It's his desires. When you focus and get to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, when you allow him to be the authority in your life, when you build relationship with him and he's your number one, that purpose you're looking for, young people, you'll find it in him and him alone. I hope you learn that before you hit adulthood. I, that's our prayer. Mine and Belinda's prayer, and I'm sure it's the prayer of your parents, that you learn that what your purpose in life is, ultimately, is his purpose. And you say, well, what is his purpose? He'll reveal it to you. He'll show you. But most of all, your greatest purpose is to point others to Jesus. Everything else you do is a byproduct. If you make him Lord of your life, you're already on the winning side. You've, you've got it made. Making him Lord of your life. You've got it made. That's not to say difficulties won't come. That's not to say hardships won't come. That's not to say that the enemy won't come and lie to you. Ask the adults in this, in this room. It's not easy. But if he's Lord of your life, you're going to be obedient to what he says, regardless of the circumstance. And if he's your savior, guess what? He's done the work for you. You just be obedient and follow through and point others to him. It's for us, not so young people. Our purpose, just like theirs, is to point others to Jesus. That's our greatest purpose. Someone pointed you to Jesus. Someone took the time to tell you about Jesus. Someone took the time to speak to you about what he did for you on that cross. Someone took the time to pray for you. To love you. As a parent, our greatest desire is to see our children, children walk in the Lord. And I get emotional. Because it is, it is my greatest desire. Not only see my daughter walk in the Lord, but your kids. And then I think, man, I hate when I cry. But then I think, if I'm this emotional and I care this much, how much more does our Heavenly Father care about what you do? About your purpose. About what He's created you for. This Christmas, take it to heart. I love presents. I love Christmas trees. I love the lights. I love the season. But I love the reminder that I love the reminder that Jesus seeing not just the day that he was born, 
but he also saw the cross. And he said, I was worth it. He said, you were worth it. He loves you. He paid the ultimate price for you and I. He didn't care about the, the hardship or the, the cost. He said, you're worth it. How much more is he worth it to us? How much more should we live for him? He died for us. He gave his life up for you and I. He gave his heavenly realm to come into this world to be like you and I so that he could understand what you and I, so he could endure the things that we can endure, so that, that we endure, so that he could be acquainted, be a man of sorrows, the Bible says. So that you don't understand, so that we could know that Jesus understands what you and I go through and what we, what we, who we are. And he, he said, yet, he said, you are worth it. The Bible says he was a lamb that was slain before the foundations of the earth. And like I said, he created you in your mother's womb. All your days were over, have already been planned out, have already been written. You know what? Before they even came to pass, he said, you were worth it. You were worth it. You have a purpose in life. He created you with a purpose. Go back and read Jeremiah 29 and 11. It may be 14, but I think it's 11. That's all right. I tell the kids all the time, it's like, you read the word of God, you may not get it right all the time, but at least you know more or less where it's at. But I know it because I've read it and I believe what he says. I believe what he says about me. I believe what he says about your children. I believe what he says about you. Do you believe it? And if you do, then live for him. Then act like it. Give them the glory and point others to Jesus so that they know what you know and they can experience what you experience. If you'll please stand. Like I said before, even as adults, sometimes we, we may have times where we feel our life is purpose, purposeless. Like we can't find our purpose. We can't find why we're experiencing the things that we're experiencing. We don't understand. We can't find our place in life. If you're at that point, go to Jesus. That's it, plain and simple. Go to Jesus. Go to him. Get on your knees and go to him and cry out to him. He'll answer you. If you draw near to me, I'll draw near to you, he says. <laughs> Young people, you don't know your purpose in life still? You're, you're trying to figure it out? We've got a few seniors in our, in our crowd who are trying to figure out where they're going to go, what they're going to do. They already have minds. <laughs> go to Jesus. Put him first. That world's going to tell you you got a purpose. That world's going to tell you that you, your purpose is this, is that. Jesus is the only one you need to listen to. He'll point you. You want to be whatever you want to be? Do it. Set your mind to it and do it. But make sure you're doing it for the honor and glory of Jesus Christ. I can guarantee you, your life will be so much better when you set your mind on Jesus and set your mind that you're going to serve him and him first. And all these things shall be added unto you, the Bible tells us. That's a promise from him. <clears throat> so today, as we get ready to dismiss, 
and we go out back into this world, remember, our greatest purpose in life is to point others to Jesus. Not just by our words, but by our actions, by the life that we live. Our life should line up with what we profess to be as believing Christians. If it doesn't, then we really need to get into the Word of God and find, figure out, okay, what is my life should be, should be like? But our greatest, greatest purpose in life is to point others to Jesus. Father God, we thank you this, this morning. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for, for the privilege to be called your children, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, because you did create us for a purpose. You, you had our days already planned out, Lord God. Nothing has taken you by surprise. None of our experiences, none of our accomplishments, none of our, our, our valleys, our mountaintops, none of, nothing in our life happens and takes you by surprise. You know it, Lord, before it's even done. Lord, I pray that each and every one of us would know the purpose in our lives. Ultimately, our purpose to glorify you, to lift you up and exalt your mighty name and to point others to you, Lord God. But I pray, Father God, as, as we, we navigate our lives through, through wherever we find ourselves in school and in our workplaces and at home, Lord God, I pray that in those seasons and in those moments, you, you help us to be sensitive to your Holy Spirit and to see the purpose you have in us when we have a meetup in the grocery store with someone or when we have an opportunity at work to speak to somebody about you, Lord God, or to show them your love or your, merciness, your mercy, Lord God. Or at school, when we see that one person who just doesn't seem to have anybody to talk to Father God I pray that you would your Holy Spirit would direct us Father God to speak to that person Lord God about the goodness of God and how God has created him or her with a purpose as well give us the courage and the boldness to speak of your name God to point others to you Lord God but give us the courage Father God and and the understanding that we do have a purpose in life Lord God that the enemy is a liar Lord God the enemy is a liar and he has no place in our minds and in our hearts, oh God. Help us to believe your word, to, to, to cultivate a relationship with you, Father God, that we, even when the enemy comes, Father God, we're not listening because we're in relationship with you, Lord God. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity that you've given me this morning to be able to speak, Lord God, your words, Father God. I pray that that your words would, were the ones that came out of this mouth, Lord God. And I pray that they're the ones, the words that are going to penetrate our hearts and our ears so that we would know our purpose, Lord God, in this life, Lord God. And that we would fulfill the purpose, Lord God, because your word says that you would do that for us, Father God. You would finish the work that you've already begun in us, Lord God. I thank you, Father God, because you don't leave us as orphans, Lord God. You've give us, you give us the strength. You guide us. You discipline us, Lord God. You correct us. You help us, Lord God. You're a good father. And like a loving and good father, you want, you want the best for us, Lord God. You want us to fulfill your purpose, Lord God. And you, you equip us with that, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, because we have the privilege to be called your children and we have the privilege to be in your house this morning. I pray that you would just continue to move in our hearts, Lord God, and be with each and every person here this, this morning, Lord God, as they go home and they go out to lunch and, and they begin a new work week, Father God, and as we celebrate this season of Christmas, that, that as believers we celebrate your, your birth, Father God. I pray that we, we just... We keep that in the forefront of our minds, Lord God. That you came into this world for a purpose, and that was to get, restore our relationship with you, Lord God. To destroy the works of the enemy and to give us the ability to, to call upon your name. We thank you for that, Lord. We love you, and in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.